Welcome back to part two of your left-handed bandit mobile paint party experience. The theme on the easel is currently April showers. But again, if you're watching this video in any other month of the year and it's not April, it still works just the same. In the first part of this video, we added our colorful uh, water to the bottom. We added our uh, vertical uh, drips in the sky, which is that darker blue, that mid blue, and that lighter blue, as well as we filled in our umbrella. For this second half of the painting, uh, we are more than 90% uh, done with this painting. We're just adding those fine bells and whistles to kind of make this painting look the best that it could possibly be. So what we're going to be doing is work, working mainly with the colors uh, black and white to finish this off. However, we can go back in and touch up other colors should we uh, decide to kind of make things more vibrant. Because this is acrylic paint, we have a complete acrylic background. And for acrylic paint to be a bit more vibrant when we add it back on, it needs something to stick to. So this is the perfect surface for our paint to stick to. So any colors we add from here will only be more intense as opposed to the first half where they were kind of going on and more muted. So what I'm gonna do is show you exactly what I mean by that is by adding just a little bit more of each of those colors at the very bottom. So with a clean brush, and you can use your smaller pointer brush for this, smaller or pointer brush. So in your kit, you should either have a smaller flat or a pointer in your kit. Either one of these will do the exact same thing. I'm gonna be using both for the second half of this video, starting with the smaller flat. I'm gonna go in at a teeny bit more uh, red to this. Notice that that red automatically gets more intense. Add a little bit more red to each area of red. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm gonna clean that brush off and quickly switch to another color. The next color I'm going to switch to is gonna be yellow. I'm gonna go in, add a little bit more yellow. That yellow is getting more intense already. You can even decide to add a couple more areas that wasn't yellow before. If you're feeling the way the yellow is looking or if you're liking any particular color, feel free to do that at any point. I got my yellow on. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more purple. So gonna add some purple in it's gonna become a lot more vibrant gonna add all those areas that had purple here as well nice and vibrant for me I'm gonna clean my paintbrush off and I know I'm going fast but again this is the final piece of the painting these are just a little bells and whistles to finish off our piece with the convenience of this video is that you can pause the video or rewind it if you like so I got my purple on the last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit more blue. Notice that that blue is making a completely different effect because it has that blue underneath it. It's becoming vibrant, but at the same time, it's also becoming a bit lighter in color, in its original color. So we got our blue on now. I'm gonna wipe this paintbrush off and then I'm going to add a little bit more white to these pieces as well. Still on the bottom, still using the same brush that you were just using. I'm simply gonna just clean it Grab a little bit more white, and then emphasize a little bit of white in different parts. Super randomly, it's just gonna add some additional detail and highlights, variety to this piece. It's no real structure, I'm just kind of randomly adding them in. So I got my white in there now, and it made it pop a lot more. So what I'm going to do next is, I am going to add some rain. I'm using the pointer brush for this, but again, all these brushes work pretty similarly. For my pointer brush, I'm gonna give my umbrella some rain by using the color white. And you might wanna watch me first because I'm just not gonna just make random rain. I'm going to change the direction of my rain to the standard up and down to more of a sideways drizzle. So I'm simply taking diagonal lines, short diagonal lines, randomly placing them onto the canvas, almost corner boxing one another to create a nice consistent pattern. I'm going to continue the same type of flow throughout the entire background above my horizon line. So again, I'll say it again, I'm, right now, I'm just working above the horizon line. I'll worry about below the horizon line in just a bit. I got diagonal, short brush strokes. If you wanna make some of them a little bit longer than the others, or shorter than the others, that's fine. That's simply going to give your painting more variety and dynamic. These are things that we've been talking about this entire time. 
So I got my diagonal brush strokes. Now, as I get to the lighter blue, I'm going to switch back to my Carolina or light blue. And because that white is so white in the background, we want it to kind of contrast better by using this Carolina blue in the wider part. So that way we can still see that consistent diagonal drizzle, but still giving our painting a cool effect. It's kind of bouncing around our colors here. I can add a little bit more in these areas as well so it's more consistent and unites together better. But up here, it may not be as noticeable as noticeable. So I got my diagonal drizzle above my horizon line. Next, I'm going to add my drizzle below the horizon line by doing the exact same thing, except I'm using only white paint for this part so that we can see through and still see those colors in the background. So, continuing the drizzle, still diagonal, still keeping that consistent pattern. If your bottom is still kind of dry from the adjustments that we made a little while ago after, when we first came from our break, maybe give your painting a couple minutes to dry. Mine is a little wet still, but it's uh, a bit passable, so I'm gonna keep going. But if yours is wet to the point where uh, it's not allowing you to paint anything, then you have no choice but to just take a quick break and let that canvas dry fully so that it will allow you to do whatever you want to do to it. So I'm continuing my diagonal drizzle. So we got a drizzle complete. And then the next thing that we're going to do is, since we have white on our brush already, I'm going to just bring out some more highlights in that umbrella by adding some white right on top of some of those areas we blended, which will automatically increase the vibrancy of that white. It's gonna add more detail, increase our vibrancy. And now we have white details in our umbrella. Only one more step left to do. I am cleaning off my paintbrush, whatever paintbrush that you have been consistently using. Get it clean. We're going to switch to the color black. And with that black paint, we're going to add an outline to the umbrella and give our umbrella a handle as well. So, taking black, make sure it's only black. Make sure it's not mixed with anything else. Use your brush, smooth both sides of that brush out on the whatever flat surface you're working with so that that brush becomes a bit tighter and sharper. And when you have a tighter, sharper line in your brush, it allows you to almost write as if you're using a marker or a pen. So with that ability, I'm going to give this umbrella an outline. I'm gonna show you how that looks with the flat brush as well. Works with both, just the same. So I'm gonna give that edge here. And this is the flat brush that I switched to. Again, both brushes give you very similar effects. It's all about how you decide to use them. So if it's not working out as easy for you, don't get discouraged. Just slow it down and try some new methods. On this side, close off my shape. And then we have some curved lines in there to show the texture or the structure of that umbrella. Gonna give our umbrella a little bit of a tip here and then last but not least I'm going to create a few more lines that first one being the handle and be very careful with the handle I can go a little bit faster because I have some more practice but take your time try to make the line as straight as you can get it curve the end and 
then I'm going to add a line back to the horizon line and make that black again so that there's a dyna dynamic difference between the ground and the background sky. And there it is. That is our completed piece. If you want to add more details in, you are welcome to do so. Of course, this is your painting, but I encourage you to kind of experiment and see what works for you. Uh, just use a little bit of paint at a time, which will allow you to uh, reduce the amount or the intensity of the mistakes that you may or may not make. I'm gonna add a little bit of detail to the handle, some white, just to make it pop just a teeny bit. But I'm afraid to touch this too much more because I really like the effect that it has and the way it came out. I have a fun time every single time I paint this piece. So there you have it. That is our umbrella, our completed piece. The last thing you'll need to do is simply initial or sign your name with your paintbrush, or if you have a Sharpie or a permanent marker nearby, that'll work well, as, will also work as well. I'm putting my initials on and I am all set. So that is it for our theme of the April showers. Uh, I appreciate you painting with me and I hope to paint with you again in the future.